The following program is presented by the HTM Podcast Network. Good evening, everybody. This is Robin Nelson with another edition of Wrestle Podcast. And my guest tonight is Bob Johnson from Stampede Wrestling. How's it going, Bob? It's great, Robin. Yeah, since yeah, Cincinnati has a lot of big names that came out of uh, you know, Cincinnati and Ohio are like John Moxley, um, Eli Drake, uh, Sammy Callahan. All, a lot of big, great names around the Ohio area. Uh, that, that's a big thing. I know we have, uh, <coughs> we have an alumni of Stampede Wrestling, great uh, Rip Rogers, who uh, doing a phenomenal job training down there. I think he's in, in uh, your neck of the woods or maybe Louisville or something. But yeah, Rip Rogers. That's, that's, that's an excellent, uh, excellent uh, wrestling area. Yeah, Rip Rogers. Yeah, he's over in Louisville, over OVW, um, which is run run now by um, Al Snow, and it's a it's a great wrestling promotion down there. That's good, and I, I understand you 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 guys have, uh, you've got a promotion yourself. Tell me. Yeah, um, we have yeah we have a promotion here in uh, Hamilton, Ohio, outside of. Um, Cincinnati called Future Great Wrestling, and it's uh, um, the owners Brian Levick and you know, and also Cody Hawk runs runs it as well. You know, I, I saw that Cody uh, actually Cody Hawk was on our uh, heartbeat radio. Bruce Hart and myself, and uh, it was an honor to see him get his uh, Cauliflower Alley Club award for the Trainers Award last year at the Cauliflower Alley Club. So, yeah, Cody's a pretty cool guy. Man. Yeah, I yeah, Cody Hawk, he deserved it. I mean, he he works hard and um he still trains wrestlers today. He's trained a lot of big names and some upcoming stars as well. You know, you were telling me about Sean Casey, you know, one of the really good journeymen in the business and uh, anybody out there who wanna get trained, you've got Cody and they've got you you got uh, Sean Casey, excellent excellent man. Yeah, I love Sean Casey. Uh, he's in physical good shape, and that guy can still run around in the ring and still wrestle. And, you know, for an older guy, he still has it. Well, I've seen him wrestle down at the Cauliflower Alley. Uh, he had this vendetta pro wrestling. And, you know, uh, Sean's not the youngest guy. He's a lot younger than I am, but uh, he's got some great moves, you know, for a guy his age. He sure does, and then he got his uh, his uh, enforcer with him as well, Big John Murray. That's, that's right, Big John. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love Big John Murray. <laughs> oh, sure. All right, Bob. Let's. Um, this is all about you tonight. So let's um, start this off. Um, How did you become part of Stampede Wrestling and working with uh, the legend Stu Hart? Let's put it this way, Robin. First of all, I want to warn, I, 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 I hope your your uh, audience doesn't fall asleep. Cause sometimes I talk kind of slow. Maybe I can say, oh, man, this guy's going to put me to sleep, but I hope I, I don't. I, I try to talk as fast as I can. Uh, <clears throat> I'm from the fans out there know the Russian, the Raw show last night. Uh, I filmed the thing in a place called Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's dead center in Canada. And uh, I'm from Winnipeg originally. I've been out to Calgary, Alberta here for about 45 years. But uh, I'm an old AWE guy in Winnipeg. I, I uh, used to be a big fan of the AWA. And I own a little grocery store right near the Winnipeg Arena where the AWA guys used to wrestle. Remember them? Uh, they'd stop in my store, and I got to know guys like Bobby Heenan and Jimmy Valiant, Jack Lanza, Bobby Duncan, Nick Bockwinkel, Jimmy Brunzel, and uh, Watt Baron Von Roschke, and uh, the Sean, Paul Deshaun, and Mad Dog, and Valiant Brothers. I got to be 
lifetime friends with most of those guys, and uh, <clears throat> again, I was more a, kind of a, a fan. I used to go down and invite me down to the wrestling, and uh, a few years later, I uh, moved out here to Calgary, Alberta, uh, from Winnipeg. And like I said, Winnipeg was always a hotbed for wrestling. Uh, they used to AW would he would draw about eight or ten thousand people every once every three weeks. You know, Winnipeg Arena. But, but anyway, I, I, I moved up to Calgary and I uh, <clears throat> I was involved with a company called the Odeon Theaters out here. It was a uh, movie business. And uh, I was a young guy out here in Calgary. And <clears throat> this was before the internet. And I don't, I think DVDs and cassette tape, tapes were just kind of coming out. People were saying, well, what, what's that all about, cassette tapes? What's going to wreck the movie business but it never did but anyway <clears throat> what happened uh, I remember I was at this one theater and uh, I was telling the manager that I, I really enjoyed wrestling and we uh, we had a show cut came in one one week and called Paradise Alley it was uh, Sylvester Stallone and Terry Funk in those days you know you had to go and always promote the show you know no, again, no internet, nothing like that. So uh, my uh, old boss, he, he said, listen, there's a guy in town here. His name is Stu Hart. He runs a thing called Stampede Wrestling. And I, I actually never even heard about Stampede, and I didn't know anything about Stu Hart or any of those guys. He said, well, why don't you give him a call, and we can do a promote, cross-promote with Stu Hart. But to make a long story short, I, uh, I went out to Stu Hart's house, the uh, home of the famous dungeon. And uh, he started introducing me to all his kids. He had like 12, eight, eight sons and four daughters. And uh, I was at his house and he had like about 30 cats in his house and about 10 dogs and quite the place. But anyway, Stu and I hit it off right from the, word go, right from the beginning. So uh, he introduced me to his uh his sons, and he, and so I said, well, so I'll make you guys a deal. I, I said, you know, uh, if you guys will let my stock at the theater business into uh, rest, it's going to be wrestling, providing you're not full. <laughs> of course, it'd be Friday night, our busiest night of the week, but anyway, some of the guy who's off, I'd say, if you guys ever want to go to Stampede Wrestling, we'll take care of you for free. And then uh, subsequently, I made a deal with the, uh, I said, you guys come down on your night off. So for several years after that, uh, they kept coming Sunday night. They'd bring the whole crew. I, that's, I got to know all the Santee guys and a lot of the old legends, and uh, that's how I kind of broke in with the hearts. So what was it like, you know, to uh, be down in the dungeon? Um, what was that experience for you? Well, that, that's an interesting place in this. <clears throat> they always talked about this boom and the Stuarts. Stuart had a Stuart's house was it was an old uh, built in about 1901 or something like that. And it was an old originally it was an old uh, hospital that they used for the, uh, the troops that were return the second the first World War troops. And, and then Stu came along and bought this thing, and he he had this room in the basement it was about maybe 10 by 10 the ceiling was about six feet high and they had this great big water pipe went right through it and uh and so Stu decided to build his own ring down not a ring but there were no ropes or anything it was just a mat and uh it consequently subsequently got known as the dungeon Stu Hart would we used to have a lot of guys and come down and they'd say, you know, that wrestling, that's all a bunch of BS and I can beat anybody. We get all these, like out here in Calgary, we get a lot of these cowboy types and headbanger, we call them these headbangers. They, they come, oh, I, I can take on any of the hearts. So Steve would say, oh man, you're exactly what I'm looking for. Please come over to my house and uh, I'll give you a little training. And uh, I remember we had these two cowboys showed up one day, and uh, they, they, I guess 
they thought Stu couldn't hear him, but <clears throat> they said that, that old that old man will kick his ass, you know. And <clears throat> so Stu said, just give it give it your best. So what Stu would do is he'd get the guy down and the you never want it too hard to put you actually down on your on your back. You tie up in a knot, literally. And uh, I remember these two cowboys. Stu would like what do you he like a ball constrictor or something. He'd get get the guy down. Say, yeah, oh, this is really good exercise, and you're going to be a great wrestler and all this stuff. And meanwhile, he just stretch the you call it stretching, and you would squeeze the guy a little bit harder and take his arm and pull it behind his neck and the guy would be in agony you know and he says so you, you still want to be, get into wrestling and <clears throat> so it was pretty funny what happened but those two guys left I think about 20 minutes with Stu and they were it was pretty funny uh, they actually recorded the thing and you hear these guys ah oh, Stu ah oh, you know so uh, that was the, the dungeon. There were two guys actually who liked to go in the dungeon. Uh, we had a guy, the uh, late great Jim Neidhart, uh, married to Stu's daughter. I remember Jim Neidhart would come up and go to Stu and he said he, he would almost be in tears if Stu did not stretch, stretch him. And a lot of the guys didn't want his to get, get Stu's hand on him. Uh, I was I was lucky to I, I never really got <clears throat> got down in the dungeon with Stu. I uh, Stu and I used to lock up and rock back and forth. And I remember, I think I was about forty five at the time, and uh, I think Stu was about eighty five. And we just lock up and rock back and forth. And I remember about <clears throat> a minute in, I'm starting to sweat beads and like oh, and, and he he wouldn't. Get tighter and then, but I said, ah, this is good exercise. And 20 minutes later, I'm like a ragged, wet noodle, you know. So that was my exercise was too hard. Wow, I bet you learned a lot from that as well. So, um, did that uh, prevent you from not being a pro wrestler and just decided that, you know, they'll just. Well, yeah, I, I said, you know, it's got to be an easier. Uh, you know, I, Robin, I'm not a, I'm definitely not an athlete like Owen or. Brad or Davy Boy or any of those guys with Pillman, <clears throat> I'm uh, just a regular <clears throat> ham and egger, you might say, and uh, I'm not an athlete. So I tried the wrestling once, and I said, "Man, it's got to be an easier way to do a body slam." So I said, "I'll do everything else in, in, in wrestling, but please let the athletes do the wrestling." I'll tell you a quick story. You want to hear a good Hulk Hogan? Yeah, I'd like to hear a quick Hulk Hogan story. I'll tell you a good We're uh, Stu. Stu uh, there's a place called Edmonton, Alberta. It's about three hours north of Calgary. And uh, Stu, uh, he wanted to go up and see Bret Hart wrestle that night in Edmonton. <laughs> Stu and I got in the car, drove up. Uh, Anyway, we're in the dressing room with Hulk Hogan, and he was getting ready for his match with a guy named the Big Boss Man. Uh huh. Remember him? Yes, I do. Anyway, uh, so Stu and I had a we had a pre a preset arrangement where Stu would put me in a in a bear hug, and then he'd rub his chin in my uh, cheekbone, and then uh, I just happened to have dentures, so I make sure they went flying. And I made sure my glasses went flying, and I was telling, telling this move. And so anyway, he's uh, we're in the dress room, and it's Hulk Hogan, and Stu says, uh, uh, "Hulk, uh, Hulk Stu used to talk. Uh, here's my friend Bob, and uh, I'm going to show him a couple of holds." And so he did the bear hug thing, and he told Hulk Hogan, he says, "Hulk." Uh, uh, there's a couple of you should tr- try this in the ring tonight you know <clears throat> I remember he took Hulk Hogan's arm and he pulled it behind his neck and you could see his hand come out the other side and uh, he kept telling Hulk hey, this is good exercise and 
and your mom and Vince will love you to do this. Don't. And he said, well, I have to get it approved. And he said, oh, just, just surprise Vince McMahon. But anyway, the big boss man, he can't believe what's going on. And make a long story short, about a year later, we're in, uh, <clears throat> back in Calgary, and there's old Stu Hart and myself in the back. And this Hulk Hogan comes along and he makes the eye contact. <laughs> Hulk Hogan says, uh, he says, hey, Hulk, uh, Listen here, at that time Hulk Hogan was a world champion, the biggest name in wrestling. And I'll never forget this as long as I live. Uh, he came up to me and, <coughs> sorry, uh, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, Stu said, uh, Hulk, uh, I got a couple more moves I want to show you here. Uh, Hulk Hogan said, Stu, would you show those moves to Bob? said to myself, sh- sh- how did Hulk Hogan, the biggest name in wrestling, you remember my name? Well, obviously he didn't want, he, he remembered the year before in Edmonton <clears throat> when Stu had him all tied up, you know. But I thought that was kind of cool. That <laughs> Hulk Hogan re- remembered my name. Hey, that's pretty awesome. I mean, from a legend like Hulk Hogan as well. Um before we got on, you were uh, telling me about you had a uh, Bastion Booger story. Yeah, we had this guy named, uh, <clears throat> big guy from, uh, brought him in from Vancouver. They weren't using him much out in <clears throat> Vancouver with the other promotion. And we brought him in, a guy named Mike Shaw. And uh, Bruce Hart was the booker at the time. And <clears throat> he changed this guy's name to, uh, he t- tag team them up with a guy called uh, Gamma Singh, the Great Gamma, and uh, he renamed this guy Mockin Singh, his uh, supposed uh, supposed brother. And uh, anyway, uh, Mike was a <coughs> lot to do radio interviews. That was my job promoting the shows and getting publicity. So anyway. Uh, Many times I'd call up some radio station, say I've got Mock and Sing, would love to come on and talk with your DJ or whatever. We're promoting a show in your town. So uh, anyway, we're out in a place called uh, Kelowna, British Columbia. It's out in the middle of uh, central British Columbia. <clears throat> and uh, it, was, uh, it was called the CBC. It'd be like public PBS. Mm-hmm. And I uh, phoned the guy up and I said, you know, we're working with the club tonight. <coughs> We'd like to have uh, Mike Shaw come on your uh, show and promote so we can raise some money for these stupid uh, kids. One moment. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, he said, yeah, I'll get him on for two minutes. Please bring him into the station. Uh, about nine o'clock, he came on, talked for about two minutes, and uh, right away uh, he kept talking and talking and talking. What happened at nine thirty? They were supposed to have the. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I've got this turn. And it was wrong. I throw here, but uh, they got. They were supposed to have uh, the Prime Minister of Canada come on the radio and announce on the CBC some big economic development in, in Kelowna. So they have to only, that's why they had to get Mike off the, off the thing. <clears throat> so anyway, this guy, this, this, make a long story short, Mike Shaw talked till noon and he had this guy uh, totally believing his character. And uh, so Mike Shaw was on with this guy for three hours. And then at noon, the guy says, oh, by the way, uh, we had to, uh, we'll be back at one o'clock for a, a, tape in, a tape interview of Brian Mulroney, the Prime Minister of Canada. I thought that was pretty cool that one of our main heels kind of took over the show. And uh, Prime Minister of Canada got bumped. 
Now that's funny. <laughs> Poor Prime Minister of Canada, man. <laughs> I bet he probably was like probably a little sad. <laughs> Yeah, and he, I don't even know if you ever caught on that he uh, got preempted, but they, I guess they, uh, somebody else taped, the, taped it in the morning and they announced about four hours later as though it was a live deal. I bet. Um, also, um, you built a uh, relationship with Bruce Hart. Um, what's that like, um, being friends with Bruce Hart and, um, what are some of your memorable moments with uh, Bruce Hart? I know you guys, you know, uh, have a, a podcast called Heartbeat Radio as well. So what's some of your good stuff um, you've done with uh, Bruce Hart? Bruce and I go back. Uh, Bruce is probably the, probably the greatest wrestling mind I've ever met. And I've met lots of people in wrestling. And I'm not saying it because he's a heart brother. But he was, uh, he's one of my, probably my dearest friends. Uh, he was uh, pretty radical in his day as a booker. He did a lot of stuff that was so over the wall and like uh, stuff that was about 20 years ahead of its time. And, uh, but he was the guy who basically got me into the uh, wrestling business. And I mentioned I was been working for the Odeon Theaters and uh, <clears throat> I had a bit of a falling out with them. And uh, the day after I left the Odeon Theaters, uh, Bruce Hart told uh, Stu, and I had known those guys for many years, and he said, why don't you hire Bob Johnson? We, we need a guy to <clears throat> do these what we call spot shows. We have a big territory out here. and We have a place called Saskatchewan. But it was like going to Nebraska or something like that. And then we've got British Columbia and Alberta, Montana. And <clears throat> Stu asked me to, since you know, we run Calgary every week, on uh, Saturday, Friday we do our TV show. Saturday we go up to a place called Edmonton. And then the vet, but we have everybody on a full time salary. So he says, I want you to go out to all these little towns all through. Saskatchewan and Alberta and British Columbia and that and booked some shows for me and I started doing that just I, I had no idea how to do it but I I, I kind of went out and I did over 3,000 shows and uh, we worked with these clubs like the Kinsman Club and minor hockey and high schools and agricultural societies <clears throat> what I found really interesting about working with those you know, we had a really good TV show and we were like the big, uh, we were like the WWE to these guys. We, we were the big guys from Calgary, and we go into their little town of a, maybe might have a thousand people, and we'd have uh, we'd have a thousand people show up for wrestling. You know, so I thought, why? You know, when you think about it, you go to a small town, you think nobody would show up, but we had, you know, we say we had the uh, minor hockey, we put it on and. Everybody in the town bought a ticket to support minor hockey. So we bring the full show of uh, everybody from Owen to Pillman to Benoit to Mike Shaw to uh, everybody into those shows. And Bruce is booking. And uh, so I, I used to run four or five shows a week on top of the two we did at Edmondson and Charlie. But then after a lot of years. And uh, it was a lot of fun, you know. Um, there so, was there was so much I great. Bruce, 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 it was Bruce Hart who told, who got me the job with with his dad. You know, he, he said, "Bob, Bob's our man, so let's go for it." And the rest of history. Oh, I I know. That's just um. I've saw some old matches online of Stampede Wrestling. I mean, you had a a lot of talented athletes and a lot of big names that came out there as well. Um, what was, um, during the Stampede days, what was it like working with, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Dynamite Kid? He's one of my favorites growing up. Well, well we, we had, I remember when Bruce Hart was wrestling over in England, and uh, he spotted a couple of guys over there, this, we changed it, we gave him, uh, Bruce gave him the name Dynamite Kid, but a guy named Tommy Billington. <clears throat> later, uh, his cousin named David uh, David Smith, Baby Boy Smith. And when Stu was hiring guys back in the late 70s and early 80s, 
<laughs> most of the guys in wrestling were all these great big guys, you know, like six foot three and muscle heads and great lifters and all that stuff. <laughs> you didn't see any small guys in it. And uh, you didn't see too many small guys. Anyway, uh, Stu con- uh, Bruce convinced uh, Stu, he said, I have a couple of guys from England <clears throat> that might help us uh, really get this promotion really going. We brought in Dynamite Kid, Tommy, who weighed about 150 pounds. He was about maybe five foot eight. And I remember all these other guys, the big heavy, he set big uh, monsters with like, are you guys out of your mind? Why would, why, you're not going to hire that guy, he's too small. You know, the baby boy was about 160 and maybe 5'10. And anyway, uh, Bruce Wright said, hey, this is, this is going to be the future of wrestling, high flying, and you've got to see how these guys do it. And <clears throat> eventually, uh, they got their bulked up a bit. Dynamite Kid, we gave him the name Dynamite Kid. Uh, he he uh, became our biggest heel in, in Stampede Wrestling. A moment. You all right? I'm all right. Okay. I mean, it, uh, remind me not to have a, a, a pistachios before the podcast. <laughs> this is this is getting great. We're talking about a great uh, story about Dynamite Kid having was the biggest heel in Stampede Wrestling. And, um, you know, take your time, you know. If you have to cough, go ahead, you know. It, it, it's, yep. it's, it's all good. Anyway, uh, well, he was a heel big time he all and we had a guy we had this manager out there he was an old shooter from England uh, who knew Dynamite a guy named J.R. Foley J.R. was uh, quite a wrestler in his day he wasn't a big guy but he, he when he retired they made him into this uh, manager and Bruce Hart had him where uh, Hitler saw a mustache and army fatigues and all this stuff and this guy got more heat than anybody in Stampede Wrestling but he managed the Dynamite Kid and then we had a few other heels join the forces and then uh, a few months later we brought Davy in and Davey, Davey boy was always the the big baby face out here I mean you could never you, you could never be a heel ever but uh, so then you had, had some classic matches with Bruce Hart and Bret Hart and uh, Dynamite and Baby Boy and Nightheart and we had a few other guys out here we had this uh, we brought a guy out here uh, training with us Jake Jake Snake out here for a few couple of years we had the Iron, Iron Sheik in the early days training a lot of guys came, and we had this other guy came in a little bit later. It was a guy named Kichi Yamada. We had a spring a lot of these Japanese guys in. We brought this Owen Hart, found this guy in Japan <clears throat> named uh, Kichi Yamada. He told, told his dad, he said, this guy's going to be the hottest, hottest thing going. We should bring him in and train him. And he uh, later became known as uh, Justin Ligger. Oh. But his real name was uh, uh, Kichi Yamada, Stampede Wrestling, baby face, without the mask. So I remember when he broke in. I don't know, we had guys like Dr. D here in, in those days. And we had uh, some pretty good heels out here. and uh, We had this other guy, uh, fans might remember him, Bad News Ellen, Bad News Brown. Yeah. <clears throat> he was wrestling here and... Uh, we had uh, we had quite a few. There was uh, I, uh, I, I I had a senior moment here. I was going to mention about a wrestler from uh, the West Coast who broke in here, and I just went blank on his name. <clears throat> it'll come. It'll come. But uh, uh, oh boy. Now you got me thinking about that. Now that's going to be running my through my head through that who, interview. Who's this wrestler from the West Coast? <laughs> yeah, no, but but so Bruce, uh, 
So yeah, he brought this guy in uh, Jack Haynes, <clears throat> and Bruce renamed him Billy Jack Haynes. What? Remember him, Billy Jack Haynes from? I think he was in WWF at the time. Yeah, he was. I remember Billy Jack Haynes. Yeah, um, I watched him growing up in the um, in the ring in WWF. Yeah, I know who Billy Jack Haynes is. Um, he wasn't a bad wrestler. No, not 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 a bad wrestler at all. You know, like I said, we 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 had a lot of these. There, there were a lot of guys came in, and uh, you know, I remember Bad News. He was an interesting guy, tough tough guy, kind of a half half shooter. You know, <clears throat> Dynamite was pretty tough too. I still think of all the wrestlers up there, probably Dynamite was the possibly the greatest WWE or greatest Stampede star we ever had. So, uh, yeah. I always liked him when him and Davey Boy, you know, finally came to the WWF as the British Bulldogs. I mean, they were just such a great tag team. They just had that great chemistry. And, you know, it's it's sad now that, you know, Dynamite or, you know, uh, Davey Boy Smith is not alive today. I mean, those guys were like big names when I was a kid um, first getting into watching professional wrestling. And then an, um, another question I'm going to ask you is, what's your thoughts about Davey Boy Smith finally getting into the WWE Hall of Fame? Well, this is why I, I, I understand. That's the, uh, <clears throat> the reason why the growing word that he's getting in there so that, that, that's about time I <clears throat> I regrettably I I think they would love to have Owen get in there but there's still a bit of maybe I don't think his wife would Martha would have ever known that <clears throat> what I would have personally liked to have seen is uh, WW maybe have Owen Dynamite Brian Pillman Bruce uh, baby boy, all as a group. That would be so awesome. I would love to see that too. Um, um, I would love to see Dynamite Kid in the Hall of Fame as well. I mean, he, all of them, him and Owen and Bruce and Davy Boy and Brian Pillman, they all deserve to, you know, be part of that Hall of Fame, man. They were the heart foundation for Pete's sakes, man. I don't know what's up. <coughs> I don't know what's up with Vince. Yeah, I'm not sure about the kind of the politics, what they're doing. They, uh, <clears throat> you know, like Davy Boy's, uh, he's got an incredible son. I don't know if you had a chance to see him wrestle. Yeah, I have. But, um, I saw him wrestle at Ring of Honor over here in Columbus, Ohio. And then, you know, um, I've seen them on uh, um, MLW, Major League Wrestling. Um I he has a lot of talent as well. Um, you know, I like to see him go further in his career. I uh, I would actually uh, like to see him go back to WWE. I think he might. I'm not going to say it on the air here, but <clears throat> I would love to see him. And I think what might be uh, as Bruce Hart and I had discussed, what would be really kind of cool would be to see. Uh, Harry go into WWE and maybe team up with a guy like Drew McIntyre and call himself the maybe the British Lions or something like that. That would be so cool. If that ever happened like that, you know how much a huge of a pop the WWE Universe would be doing? Well, yeah, that, I think that would be phenomenal. Drew, I, I, I had a, I had a, <clears throat> I was down at WrestleMania this week, this summer, this, uh, the last WrestleMania night. I uh, ended up, I was at the WWE hotel and having breakfast with Natalia's mother. And uh, and uh, so uh, after that was all over, I, I kind of wandered around the lobby and I ended up talking for about a half an hour with, with Drew McIntyre. He was uh, like, I'm, I'm six feet tall and I feel, felt kind of small beside him, but a big boy, you know, and uh, we had a really good talk and and uh, he had, I thought, I said, uh, he knew, he knows Harry, and I thought, man, you guys, what a combination that would be to have Harry Smith, who's about six foot six, uh, ripped. I mean, uh, I don't think he's got any body thought, and he's strong as hell, and great wrestler, and I thought that would be a, an interesting combination. 
Oh, that would be one um, powerhouse of a tag team. I mean, uh, they would do good. Shoot, they probably would. If that ever happened, they probably would end up being a Raw or SmackDown tag team champions. Well, there's another guy that we he's actually from Calgary here, uh, <coughs> a guy named Raj Singh. Uh, he wrestles, so he's out with a bit of an injury right now. I think you're going to see him back. <clears throat> but we trained him from scratch, a guy named uh, Gunnar Mahal. And uh, I think he might, <clears throat> you know, if they repackaged him a little bit, I think uh, Gunnar Mahal and Harry and Drew McIntyre, that could be a that could be an awesome combination. I totally think so. so. Jin- I totally think so too, uh, but go ahead. <laughs> I think, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times uh, you got to just—it's the way they use these guys. And I know they're using uh, Kinder Ma for a, for a while, and then and then they kind of then he was kind of put into that what I call Triproni status or something. He, <clears throat> but he's been out. But he, he's a really good guy. He's about six foot five, you know. Pretty good wrestler, so uh, it's a, there's another guy that we trained up here back in the day. Well, we trained at Nat, 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 Natty in Italia. Uh huh. And you talk about the dungeon. The, the story, I remember when Natalia was training with the. She was the only woman training in the dungeon with the boys and taking the big bumps with the boys, you know. So and, did. Uh, did Natalia take any stretches too? Yeah, no, she took all every every bump you could think of, and then her husband is uh, P.G. Wilson, better known as Tyson Kidd. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, he got injured, but he's a tremendous athlete in his own in his own right. You know, um, yeah, I remember there's Harry and P.J. and all these guys training together in the dungeon. He would take those guys down, and <clears throat> a lot of times uh, Bruce did me did most of the training with Ross, his brother. But every so often, Stu would come in and show him a little bit of extra move, you know. Okay, and I got another question I'm going to ask you too. Um, tell me about the the first uh, triple threat match um, you guys created before uh, WWE got wind of it. situation we had a and we had this guy Jerry Morrow he was uh, he and his brother uh, uh, were resting for us and Jerry was sort of a half heel half baby face and we had this other guy uh, Kama Singh who was a full blooded uh, heel always a heel we had this other guy, Angel Acevedo, who we called the Cuban Assassin. He was actually from Puerto Rico, and he, uh, I don't know if you ever saw any old pictures of the Cuban Assassin, but he uh, <clears throat> he was sort of uh, more over as a baby face, but, <clears throat> but a big, a big, uh, a big, a big heel. And, uh, so, one moment, i got to clear my throat again. Oh, go ahead, man. Take your time. I'm not used to, to, to doing all these heavy duty interviews. I always do the interviews myself. But so, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, we had, Bruce and I were coming back, and we, we, had, we had a couple other guys. We had this guy, we had guys who were sort of, it was sort of the attitude era, and those days, you always had, it was, with us, it was always the kayfabe day. We had uh, the heels and the, and the baby faces. We had them, always had them in separate dressing rooms, drove in separate bands. You'd never see a baby face and a heel ever together in front of a fan. <clears throat> but we had a few guys who were kind of like that attitude era, like Austin. So uh, 
we had to come up with an action. I, I said to Bruce, let's begin to think about a match called maybe we'll have three guys in the ring at once and somehow we can settle it. It may be a little bit unique or different. And they had tried it a few years earlier and it didn't really take off. But <clears throat> So we had this thing, uh, Jerry Moore, uh, Gamma, and this guy, uh, Ben Bazarab, and uh, we thought we'd try this thing. We called it, a, 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 those days, the Bermuda Triangle. It seemed to be the rage everywhere. So we uh, called it the Bermuda Triangle match, and uh, it became one of our hottest matches. And then, uh, lo and behold, a few years later, we changed the name to a triple threat match, <clears throat> and then I, just, I noticed one night on the WWE, they, we have a brand new match that we, nobody's ever tried called the triple threat match. But hell, that's our match, you know, so. But I guess that's what happens in the business, you know. Um, yeah, how did uh, Stampede Wrestling um, get a relationship with, uh, you know, WWF at the time before WWE? It seems like most of all of your guys from Stampede, you know, wrestling, you know, some of the hearts and all the... Yeah, it's an interesting story there. I make a kind of quick story, but uh, for many years, uh, they had this whole group called the NWA. Yeah. Uh, National Wrestling Alliance. And they were about the... They were a bunch of... Most of them were a bunch of shysters who were... They had all these different shyster promotions down in the States and nobody really got along and they were always trying to outdo the other guy and <clears throat> anyway they started this thing called the NWA and uh, Stu became a member of the NWA and had a uh, eventually Stu Hart had a bit of a falling out with the, uh, the <clears throat> they were every stampede at the Calgary Stampede that's a big rodeo we have and Stu would bring in the world champion you bring in sometime Harley Race or Under the Giant or whoever was the NWA champion. <clears throat> so they had had a where they double booked. Can't, I think it was Harley he got double booked. And anyway, uh, they would advertise that the world champion Harley Race would be coming into Calgary to wrestle Bret Hart. And uh, <clears throat> right at the, about a day before. It ended up, uh, hardly get a call. This is a very sorry. I got booked in another place. So all of a sudden, we got no, we got no, uh, what are we going to do for uh, the world champion? <clears throat> so Stu called up, uh, Vern Gagne. <clears throat> and, uh, as it happened, uh, they had the, the guys had a night off. So they flew, we flew up Nick Bockwinkel in the AWA. He had a phenomenal Iron Man match with uh, Brad Hart went in about, an, about an hour, I think what ended up going about 90 minutes. It was a really good match. and uh, <clears throat> So they had already severed relations with the NWA. They had a temporary thing with the uh, AWA. <clears throat> and then at that point, uh, Vern sold his promotion to Vince. And I remember around... Uh, 80, that's about 82 or 83, but 83, <coughs> Vince said, uh, he, that's when he kind of, <coughs> kind of took over. He, uh, told, he offered Stu a million bucks, take over Sampede Wrestling. <coughs> and he said, I'll, I'll take, uh, the main guys. And we ended up giving him, uh, Nightheart, Godheart, and the Bulldogs. And uh, he said, I want to run, and Stu's going to get a big percentage, and we'll pay a million bucks and 100000 down. And to make a long story short, uh, they ran Calgary, and they didn't, couldn't give the tickets away. Really? So they kinda, yeah, they kind of severed their relationship with, uh, with WWE, and uh, they paid Stu a bit, but they finally they just said, I think we we'll just uh, we kind of want out here, and uh, you guys want to start Stampede Wrestling up again. In '86, we that's when I started with them. 
they just decided, well, we're not going to go very far with WWE. And, uh, <laughs> so, so we, uh, that was it for them. They've had a bit of a, <clears throat> a relationship with them over the years. You know? But then, uh, as it happened, Vince, uh, we started Stantine and we were running for about five years up to 1990. Finally, Stu decided to shut her down, and it was getting pretty tough in those days. A lot of the guys, we had this guy, Honky Tonk Wayne, uh, Honky Tonk Man was working for us. He got a, he got offered a job making ten times the money. And I don't blame the guy, you know. I say, well, you know, <laughs> like Bruce Hart came up with that whole Honky Tonk Man thing. Remember, he had a Honky Tonk, he gave him the name Honky Tonk, and he said, I want you to dress up like Elvis Presley and uh, the sideburns and all that stuff. And then Honky Tonk got a job down with Vince. Remember, Honky came up to me and said, Bob, he says, uh, Vince told me to make 30, they want to make me 30 new, new and completely different costumes for the Honky Tonk man. And before you know it, he's in, so we lost him and then Dave, we had the last Dave Schultz and Bad News. And, you know, we we did have a bit of a, uh, not a really working relationship, but not an adversarial relationship with them either. You know? Wow, that's crazy. Um, Actually, yeah. I can, uh, you know, as a, as a fan of, stand of wrestling, I feel very, very blessed by all the uh, people I've met in the business and <clears throat> all the experiences that I've had in the business. But I was out and uh, driving out and robbing to a, to a place called uh, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to set up a bunch of spot shows. And I drove all bloody night. It was about a nine-hour drive and, <clears throat> and driving down the highway just about, about must have been about seven o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning and I'm Driven all bloody night, tired, you know. And all of a sudden, I looked behind. They got the RCMP sirens going, and there's about four of them. I said, "Gee, what's going on?" And they all came right behind my car, and I said, "Gee, was I speeding, or did I have my seatbelt on?" You know, all that stuff. They stopped me, and they said, "Are you, uh, are you Bob Johnson?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "What did I do wrong?" He said, "Please come with us." <clears throat> so we go into retry- to Saskatoon. Would you please call Mr. Hart, your boss in Calgary? Wait, so, so Bob, I've got a problem here. WWF are at the Calgary Stampede tonight. Uh, we have 20,000 seats sold. Sold out place. The announcer called uh, Billy Red Lions has got laryngitis. He couldn't make it. Ed Whalen, who was a regular announcer <laughs> he was in the holidays and they couldn't find the other announcer they said we need an announcer but can you please drive back to Calgary to be to announce at the dome tonight <laughs> which I did and I'll, I remember I can actually say that I have got I, I did work for the WWE I, I can put that on my resume I never thought I'd ever be <clears throat> doing the main event at front of 20,000 people and announcing uh, John Studd against uh, John Kerr Dog and I think it was uh, uh, Bundy against Hulk Hogan. thought that was a cool, a really cool deal, you know. And also, uh, c- uh, congratulations for being 40 years sober as well. Oh, yeah. So, <clears throat> see a lot of guys in the a lot of guys in the uh, business, you know, they, they they could have used uh, help. They a lot of uh, guys have a lot of problems with their addictions and stuff. And I was very uh, very fortunate. I joined uh, an organization that got me sober, and I, uh, I I know a lot of guys in the, a lot of wrestlers who are in, in that same program. And uh, I, I don't mention anybody by name. I had mentioned myself and up in the 
member of the thing called Alcohol- Alcoholics Anonymous. It kept me sober. And, uh, and, uh, and that's all I, like, I've just been blessed. I've been associated with so many really great people in the business. And <clears throat> one of the things that I found really interesting about, uh, being in this, in this business is being involved with these things like the College Star Rally Club and run by B. Brian Blair, the killer B himself, president of the College Star Rally Club. And I've been going down there for about 20 years. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> and then there's another outfit uh, called the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, uh, run by uh, Cowboy Johnny Mantell, really good wrestler out of uh, Texas. I go down to this to his thing, and then I go to <clears throat> see my old friend Jerry Briscoe and J.J. Dillon and Charlie Fez and a few of those guys down in Water Iowa. And uh, so, you know, these, that's a great place. And I always tell it, guys, if you're in the business, a fan or a worker or anything, get to these places and attend these events. Rub shoulders with guys. You, know, you never know who you're going to meet. I've met so many great people at the at these uh, functions. Uh, speaking of Califaro Alley Club as well, um, you also know a, a a cool person, a friend of mine as well, and she's really nice. Is uh, Patricia Summerland, who was uh, goes by Sunny the Glow Girl. Oh, yes, <clears throat> Sunny. Sunny. Uh, I still call her Sunny. You know, she's a real a beautiful, beautiful woman, very intelligent. She's uh, she's quite a wrestler in her, own, in her own way, but I actually had her on the uh, <clears throat> I had her on the Heartbeat Radio a couple of times and a few years ago when they were honoring the uh, old girls at Connick Mall Club, I decided to bring a bunch of them on and Bruce Hart and I said we we're going to bring a special uh, host on Diana Hart. So we had Diana and uh, Sunny and uh, several others. There was Roxy and uh, a girl named Hollywood and a few of them. They were on the show and it was it's like sitting, listening to a show called The View. And uh, it, was, it was cool. They went on for about two hours, talked. So during the show, they... Uh, they said, we have this thing called the Girl Girl Cruise. We're going to be taking a cruise up on the uh, on uh, the Caribbean with the Girl Girls. I, I'm, from, I'm from Western Canada, man. We have no water around here. It's, it's all of this prairie and stuff. I've never been on a ship or anything, so I, I ended up going down to spend a week on the Caribbean with the girl girls. Let's put it that way. That's awesome. Um, also, are you coming out with a book as well? I've been trying to write a book for 40 years. Again, that's not one of my big suits. I'm, I'm an educated guy, but when I, I, I got, I've got a lot of stories and a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of things I can say about the business and, uh, I could probably write a pretty good book on uh, some of the good ribs I've seen a lot. But that's one really interesting thing about I don't know if they do it nowadays with the young guys, but the old days when you're on the road and you did these long road trips, you'd be in the middle of nowhere and the guys used to always like to amuse themselves. They would pick on a couple of victims Two of the guys who got victimized most were Brian Pillman. They loved to rib him. I could tell you a couple of really good ribs they pulled on him. Yeah, let's hear some Brian uh, Pillman ribs. Uh, this would be and interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll talk, after that, I'll tell you a good rib about the, the pulled on this guy, uh, Bill Casmire. The world's strongest man, I can tell you. They loved ribbing him, too. But anyway, we're out in this place in the middle of in the Okanagan called Kamloops. And uh, I mentioned that place uh, called uh, 
Kelowna. Uh, anyway, where we did the interview with Mike Shaw. So it's about a two hour drive and Coleman was one of these guys, kind of ladies man, he, he wanted to, hey, Bob, let's get out of here. We gotta get over before the last call is over. He said, I got a girlfriend waiting for me and they're gonna buy me some drinks and all that stuff. And he, he, was, he had this woman was madly in love with him, a big wrestling fan, so I had the whole dress, the whole crew, everybody, the heels, baby, I had them all involved in this rib he came up with. We, we said to him, uh, Chris Benoit went up to Pullman and says, Bob, did you want us to stop in uh, Winfield? Now, Winfield is a little town about 10 miles from Kelowna. I said, yeah, if you guys wouldn't mind stopping in Winfield, then I remember he probably would say, uh, we, 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 we got to get down to Cologne for last call. And Bruce interjected and everybody interjects it, you know. Uh, Stu's sister is a senior citizen in the senior citizen's home in Winfield. And they've asked specifically for Brian Pillman to stop in and have a, say a couple words on saying no to drugs and helping the old timers out. And everybody was saying this with a straight face. And we had been working him for weeks on this, about this going to Winfield. So we, we arranged with the guy who owned, one of, the guy was a big wrestling fan and he was the, uh, <clears throat> the manager of the, uh, uh, the custodian down there at this uh, senior citizen's home. So uh, we we get there and uh, oh, Brian and Brian and Bruce and myself and I think Chris Benoit and there were a couple others. But Brian goes in there and they got all had to wake up all these old senior citizens. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, Johnson, what am I doing here? So, well, you you know, Stu's sisters here. You, we're expecting you, Brian. Just gonna be here for a few minutes. Meanwhile, he says, "I gotta get to Kelowna. I got a hot, hot date. Last call, you know." And he said, "Don't worry, we'll get you there and all that stuff." So we had all these old senior citizens come out, and then uh, the custodian ended up making us a bunch of cake, and uh, they had some cake and donuts and tea and all this stuff. And Brian was talking about saying no to drug drugs to these poor old guys for about a half an hour. We're all trying to keep a straight face. So we finally uh, finally got, got out of the place to get down to Kelowna. We're in this hotel in Kelowna. There's Ross, Owen, Bruce, myself. So we had two double rooms in this uh, hotel and another guy and sick. Johnson, can I borrow the can I borrow the van? I want to get over to that bar. I got a hot date waiting. I said, sure. You take go ahead, take. And so we're we're in this uh, motel in Kelowna, <clears throat> two separate rooms, and Bruce Hart had found this major old dog outside, looked like a uh, old mutt. We brought Owen and Bruce brought this old dog into uh, into the room. <laughs> gave him a, I think gave him a halcyon or something to knock him out. Or, a, or some kind of, he, he knocked the poor dog out. Took Brian Pillman had this thing called, his headband called a bandana. They put the bandana on the dog, and they put his leather, uh, his leather coat out on the dog and put it in, in Brian Pillman's bed. So, about three o'clock in the morning, Brian Waters in and half cut, and he's pissed off because he could only have one drink, and his girlfriend didn't show up. She had left or something. So we had it rigged up where the dog was in his bed. We were in the other room, and they were asleep, but we were all awake, just waiting to see the reaction. So Owen went into the bathroom and he un unscrewed the light bulb, and he put a he put a uh, great big uh, waste paper back
basket, pour water on the top. Brian comes in and he's all half, half cut, you know, jumps into the bed. And the dog comes, comes uh, alive all of a sudden and Brian's going crazy, you know, and then he jumps up, runs in the washroom, the cat turn the light on, opens the door, the water comes down. I'll try to keep a straight face. And uh, I remember the next morning, Brian came up to myself and Ross, and he said, well, I said, by the way, did you have a good date? With, did you have a few drinks? Oh, I came home, and I got out of bed, and there was this dog in the bed, and Ross kept saying, we didn't hear anything. What are you talking about, dog? And he said, I went in the washroom, and I got this water. He says, uh, we didn't hear anything. I think you're uh, matching that, Brian. I think you had, maybe, were you hungover, or uh, did you have too much to drink? And, uh, anyway, that was, uh, that was one of the type of ribs that they loved doing with old, old Brian. But, uh, I, I, I've got another interesting rib. You got time for another quick time? Yeah, we rib? can do it. Yeah, yeah, let's do, tell me another quick rib story. Yeah, okay. I got this, uh, in the middle of Saskatchewan, there's a place called, uh, Tisdale. And, uh, out in Tisdale, it's like, being in the middle of Iowa or something. They had this stuff called grapeseed. It's like a canola oil. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's like like a wheat. It's like it's a grain that they grow on Saskatchewan. So every time we went by this Tisdale, which was in the middle of the province, we, they had a sign that says, Welcome to Tisdale, land of rape and honey. And uh, we're going, I always point out to Brian, you know, uh, I wish they could change that sign and just say, welcome to Tisdale. I don't know why they have to put that word rape on there. Because they, 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 they called it rape. It's a rape seed, but out, out there, all the farmers called, just call it rape. Mm-hmm. And Brian had no idea what that meant. <laughs> so, we used to do all these, uh, we had about a, about a thousand kids at this high school trying to raise some money for the graduation. So Brian Pullman used to do the say no to drugs. So we had, uh, we had the mayor and the principal and everybody uh, in the ring and there was uh, Mike Mockinson and Gamma in one corner and Bruce and Pullman in the ring and I, I'm doing the announcing and so I uh, want to thank all those great people here in Tisdale for supporting you. I said, by the way, Brian Pillman's got a few words to say to the students here first. So meanwhile, uh, Bruce and Owen got them all wound up about this problem with the rape problem. With the... Anyway, Brian got up there. He says, I want to tell all you kids out here in Tisdale, say no to drugs. But what's really got me really irritated, and it has to stop right now. I want all you kids to stop, all you young men here in Tisdale to stop all that raping. All that raping. <laughs> so they have this principle. It's the name of a green, and everybody's showing up. It's the name of a green. <laughs> and this is, it's a... Mike Shaw grabs the mic and he says, Pillman, why don't you mind your own business? The people out here in Tisdale want to rape the women. That's their, their business, not your business. <laughs> Back to Brian and he went crazy. He says, and he went on and on. But the, uh, that was that was, that was was a good rib. That was one of the classic ribs. But I, I, could, I could tell you ribs all night. I could... I could <laughs> There's so many good ribs. I've been bit lots of times. Ribs are, you know, you, you just, just, they're all in good fun, you know. I bet they are. And Bob, 
thank you so much to coming out of your bu- busy time to come on the podcast and uh, share your stories about being part of Stampede Wrestling and Stu. It's great to um, hear all these great stories. Uh, thank you for sharing those. I'm sorry about my voice tonight. I'm not sure if, uh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope I didn't bore everybody too much and put everybody to sleep. It's <laughs> a uh, problem. I've, I have these damn dentures. I, uh, I had, uh, way back, well, 40 years ago, I, I had this, uh, without going into details, I, <clears throat> I had, I lost all my teeth due to, a very serious illness and I had some radiation so I had to yank out all my teeth so for the last 45 years I've had these dentures and sometimes when I talk you know people say do you mumble or I can't understand you what were you saying so I, I don't want to <clears throat> tell them the dentures but sometimes uh, they put the dentures in and then they move a little bit and what did you say what did you say you know but so I hope I came to clear enough. Yeah, you did. I, I was able to understand you. Um, yeah, I, I listened to everything. There was a few, you know, times where, you know, um, I had to listen really closely, but I got everything what you had to say. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it's, uh, like I say, well, you know, down the road, I, I would, if, if you ever, um, I can come on again. I can maybe, maybe anytime you want Bruce or, Ross or Harry or I can get lots of guys I've had people had over 350 guests oh I'll definitely be um, a ton of them on yeah, I'll be definitely having you back on because you're you're a cool guy. I would love to hear some more stories. I would love to do a part two with you as well. And yeah, that would be cool um, if you know I was able to you know get like Stu and Harry and all of them on as well. That would be fun too. So yeah, Bruce Hart will tell you he's got some he's got a unique way of talking on the he'll get everybody laughing and he's got some really interesting. Uh, stories and like the same with Bruce Hart he uh he's just an all around athlete you know he can talk to you about boxing boxers back in the 1900s and he can tell you all about Major League Baseball in the 1930s or tell you about the Green Bay Packers back in 50 years ago or whatever you want any sport he seems to be a an encyclopedia and uh, when it comes to like he, you guys just want to come on and talk about training. He can, you can go on and tell you about how. I I, I don't I never did the training. I helped help, help train a bit. I did all the publicity and I did some announcing and I helped put the money in the books and stuff like that. But but uh, you know Bruce Hart is uh, he's a really good guy and he'll really tell you what it's up he's been around he's wrestled all over the place Harry's a really good guy and I can try, try to get Harry to come on one of your shows and I would love to have both of the um, I would love to have Harry on I would love to have Bruce on too because I would love to pick Bruce's brain <laughs> oh yeah no that, that, that's what Bruce Bruce's whole deal is he's, Bruce has got a couple of sons who are the one son Tori who's uh, yeah <laughs> really coming along training right now and uh, yeah. I don't know if it's man, it's got to be a tough time in the wrestling business I, I'm so, a little bit sorry for a lot of the young aspiring guys I don't know how many guys are going to make it to the uh, big time or if there's any money in it I'm not sure about this a- AEW I, I watch that sometime and, you know you got Japan and that but boy it's it's, it's got to be a, it's a Gotta be a tough, tough grind. Oh heck yeah! A lot of, lot of dedication, you know. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be um, following uh, Tori Rex, Torin Rex Hart. Yeah, he's like the third generation wrestler. Um, I've seen some stuff on him. I'm gonna definitely follow and see what hap- what he does. So yeah. Yeah, well, that's, that's great, Robin. I'm glad things are working out in your promotion, and uh, <laughs> you know, I'll hook you up with Bruce and tell you just. You and Bruce can talk on air, or you can talk. Bruce will talk to you for a couple. You know, once you get talking, you might 
be on for three hours talking about one st- Yeah. You know? And uh, <clears throat> he's got the opinionated on, on how it should go down right now and how the business should go. I, I still watch wrestling a bit. I'm not big time wrestling fan. I always tell people, I say, well, you're, you're, you're almost seven, year, seven years old. Are you still watching that stupid wrestling? And I said, you know, <laughs> I got out of the wrestling, but the wrestling never really got out of me. Hey, there's Bruce nothing. And are, Bruce and I, we, we both say, hey, we, we are two of the biggest fans in the business. And if you want to call Bob Johnson or Mark, you can call me a Mark. That's fine. <laughs> okay. We're, we're, we're fans. Bruce, I remember Bruce said, you want to call me a Mark? I don't uh, we're all marks. He said, everybody in the wrestling business, we all started out as, out as fans. Most guys are in it, are fans, and there's nothing wrong with that. I always tell guys, there's nothing wrong with being a fan, you know. And uh, it's been in my blood for many years, and like I say, I'll let you go here. I'm, I'm so blessed with uh, people I've met. I've met some of the biggest names in the business, and Guys I, and girls I never thought I'd ever meet. Uh, we've had a ton of people on Heartbeat Radio, and if any of your uh, your your people want to get on, we have 350 shows, and we have the top 100 of our shows on YouTube. All we have to do is Google and Heartbeat Radio on YouTube. And we've had everybody from Rick Flair to that duel of the butcher to. Uh, Fully to KJ Dillon to you name it Vince Russo we've had we've had them all on there and it's just been a great time we're, we're on a bit of a hiatus right now this year so we did so many shows but we're going to bring it up again and we're going to be going on what they call Google Hangouts so we're going to take it to the next level now that's going to be tough for an old guy like me who's still computer I'm still a computer illiterate <laughs> or if I'm trying to learn how, how that Google Hangouts is, but we're going to go in and do a have our show on Google Hangouts on YouTube coming up in the next probably this fall. So uh, we'd love to have you join us maybe as a guest host. We're always looking for good, good guest hosts. I would love to be a guest host, and it would be an honor to be a guest host on um, Heart Radio with you and Bruce. I, I'm so, so- we'd love, love to have you on there and. Uh, you sound really knowledgeable, and you you got a good uh, rapport, and you seem to be really uh, sharp and know what the hell you're doing. You know, you very sincere guy and enthusiastic, and that's what it's all about: being enthusiastic. And uh, so we'd love to have you. And uh, so we'll probably, I think we're gonna wait till uh, wait till uh, maybe the fall and start start the thing up again. Hey, I'll be definitely listening. I'm definitely looking forward to being, um, you know, on your show as a guest host. I'm definitely going to have you here again here on Wrestle Podcast because I really enjoy talking to you. And you seem like you're a very serious, you know, genuine kind of guy too who loves professional wrestling like me. So, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, uh, you know, like someone called sports entertainment. Yeah, some pro wrestling, and I don't know. Like I said, I've got, uh, I, I talk to a lot of guys on a regular basis. I was had a good talk. I got, he and I were talking for about two hours the other day at Abdul the Butcher, one of my very dear friends. I can probably get him to do your time. And another really super good guy is a guy named J.J. Dillon. Oh, yeah, part of the Four Horsemen. Baron Von, another good friend of mine is Baron Von Roschke and... Magnum T.A. and uh, Tiger Conway Jr. I got so many really good guys that would love to come on and I can get a lot of girls too old, not old girls, but I can get some, I can get a lot of, Harry, I'm sure I can get him on there and maybe Brian Pillman. And uh, uh, no, it, it's good. It's, uh, so we, we've, uh, Again, I've been very blessed. I, I just started out as a fan back in Winnipeg. And I remember as a young kid going to see a Ripper Billy Watson and Yukon Eric and all these guys. And one time there was a 
I remember standing, I was a real mark at the time, a real big fan, I was about 12 years old or 14 years old, and I stood uh, in the back of the Winnipeg Auditorium waiting for the wrestlers just to say hello. I remember these two guys, they were called the Royal Kangaroos, and I seemed to hit, hit, hit it off and had some rapport, and they asked me if I would carry their suitcases back to the hotel. It was it was like about 30 below zero, and they decided to walk for the exercise, and here's old Bob going through the snow carrying their suitcases, so I thought that was kind of cool, and then it, Again, I, I, I've met so many people, and I've uh, been fortunate. I met Vince McMahon a few times. I met, in closing, I, there's one guy I, I, I had a chance to meet, uh, Roland Hart's funeral. I got, the guy come up to me. I didn't, I'm in <laughs> kitchen there, and the guy came up, and I said, Gee, I kind of recognize that guy. He says, Hi, I'm Paul. Uh, they call me Hunter. Oh, Hunter, Hunter, Triple H. And he says, uh, yeah, you can call me Paul. He says, tell me, Bob, there's such a thing as the dungeon? Me. Hey. So I took him down, spent about a half an hour at the dungeon, and I had Luna Vachon with me that day and took him on a tour of Stu Hart's house. Well, oh, you never know who you're going to meet pretty nice guy old hunter you know and, uh, there's so many guys another guy one of my dear dear friends I don't want to start name dropping but another guy I'd love to have him give you a call a guy named Hillbilly Jim Oh, I did. I had Hillbilly Jim on my show he's a fun guy um, he's a good uh uh, you know, I have a good friend of mine. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Um, Hurricane JJ McGuire. Um, okay. Yeah, he wrote um, a lot of the '80s theme songs for the wrestlers in WWF with Jimmy Hart. And uh, JJ McGuire is like a good friends with uh, Jimmy Hart and Hillbilly Jim. So yeah, he hooked me up with Hilly, Hillbilly Jim, and um, that was a fun interview. I I mean, Hillbilly Jim still has his regular landline phone. His old answer machine. He doesn't believe in technology, but yeah, he was a good interview. <laughs> yeah, I, I was down. I went down to uh, called uh, a guy named Scott Teal had uh, invited me down to the thing last year in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I've never. Uh, that, that's a real cool, neat place. That, you ever been to Nashville? Yes, I have. I've been to Nashville plenty of times. And anyway, I uh, I go down to uh, Nashville. It was called the Tennessee. Wrestling reunion. I met a ton. I met uh, Rocky Johnson down there, and uh, an old friend of mine, and Hillbilly Jim, uh, ended up having dinner with him. And uh, there's another guy from Canadian guy, but he he lives down in Kentucky, uh, called Bruce Swayze. And uh, anyway, Bruce, uh, remember we were in Nashville, and he said to me, uh, "You ever been to a football game?" I said, yeah, we're a Canadian football league, you know, three down football. So he's got season tickets to the Titans. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, I went to the Titans game, and then the next night I went to the Bridgestone Arena to the Predators because hockey is, everything here is hockey. Oh, yeah. And uh, the fans down in Nashville, Nashville were crazy fans, too, so they were rabid. Uh, and that, that was a really good place, but uh, I, I had uh, lunch with Bill uh, Billy and a uh, nice guy, big guy, man. He's he's a big boy, I tell you. He's uh, But he he broke in with Stampede back in about 82, 83. And we trained him right at the early days, you know. That's awesome. We became really, really close friends. There's a few guys like that. Uh, I was in WrestleMania. Went down to WrestleMania this year. So I, I, they gave me this media pass from Heartbeat Radio. I, saw, I somehow talked my way into getting a media pass. But anyway, went down to this uh, thing called WrestleCon. And I'm, I'm walking in the hotel and I hear this guy yell, Bob Johnson. And I said, gee, it must be, it must be another Bob Johnson here. Hey, Bob Johnson. How are you doing, my man? 
I turn around, my old friend Jimmy Valiant. Oh, and nice. And I, he's one of my very dear friends from the four, AWA back in the 80s, you know. But he was just leaving, and I was just going in. He says, Bob Johnson, enjoy, you know. So, you know, there, there's guys, and I, I see a lot of guys I stay in contact with. With a lot of guys in the business and uh, wrestlers and uh, a lot of the historian type guys that are really, uh, I, it's another really good friend of Bruce and me, I call Mike Mooneyham. I'm sure I, I don't mean to be name dropping all these guys, but he'd be a, he's a really good guest and uh, he's down from uh, South Carolina. And there's lots of guys. I had Vince Russo on our show one time and really excellent guest. Bob Backlund came on one time. One time I had this, uh, my old friend Don Leo Jonathan, the Mormon giant, came on. So he's, he came on and he says, Bob, Bruce, I talk so <laughs> I don't want to bore, I don't want to put everybody to sleep. How long do you want me to talk? And I said, Don Leo, you can talk as long as you want. And uh, he says, about half an hour? I said, sure. So half an hour comes and he said, you are, you, we, you got a half an hour? Oh, I'll stay a little longer, so. <laughs> an hour comes and two hours comes. You get an extra hour, three hours. And I said, Don Leo, we, we have no more time. We cut us off. <laughs> so he come back for another another show. So about a month later, he came back. Bruce, Bob, I promise I'm not going to talk so long this time. <laughs> three more three more hours. He talked in those three hours. I bet that was so, good. Uh, but but there's a lot of guys who have passed away who I had on the show, and uh, my friend Larry Henning came on the show I had him on several times I had him on this show and they they made him the honorable governor of Minnesota it was Larry Henning Day in Minnesota where they had we had him on for about two hours hmm. and he says Bob I said would you like to come on our show next week and tell us about what they what you and the Baron and all those guys did and for your uh, your your induction into the Minnesota Hall of Fame and uh, actors, actors, I'd love to come back. Awesome. And he passed away the night before he was supposed to come on. So oh, that's a so set. I was very very grateful having met him and had had him on the show. That's awesome. We had, a, we, we had another guy on the show uh, pass away. Uh, Great Don Fargo, one of the real boy. This guy was about as hardcore as they come in the wrestling. I bet. One of the famous Fargo pop boys. You know, we've had them. We've had some interesting guys at Harley, Rick Flair and Mick. And there's a few guys I like to get on. I've never had on, but uh, I've had so many really interesting people, and I stay in touch with all these guys all the time. That's and awesome. Unfortunately, you had mentioned about, I'm going to let you go here, but uh, uh, you had mentioned about Cauliflower Alley Club. Yes. Get a chance, go to Cauliflower. You know, I've got, Ross Hart, I've been there for 20 years straight. We have, I've never missed a reunion in 20 years. It's been the greatest experience in my, in my wrestling life, spending for three or four days down at the Cauliflower in Vegas. And hanging out with, you never know who you're going to hang out down there, Pat Patterson or, or uh, Roddy Piper or whoever. You're going to meet, you'll meet so many guys. But this year, I was all set to go, but I have to pass going this year. I have an, an opportunity to go to Iceland, where all my relatives came from, my grandmother and grandfather on both sides. I'm the only Johnson in Canada who's never been to Iceland. My brother's been there about a dozen times, and they've been bugging me for years. You've got to go to Iceland. So I came up, I got a really good deal. 
you know, I have to inform all the people at the Cauliflower Valley Club that I won't be there this year. But I'll be there again next year. But if you get down there, it's a great time. Uh, you can have a really wonderful time. Have you been to Vegas before? Oh, yeah, I have. I grew up in California. I've been to Vegas, uh, you know, a bunch of times. Uh, but never to call a Ireland club. I'm thinking about going this year with uh, Cody Hawk and um, a bunch of the wrestlers from Feature Great Wrestling to, you know, go have some yeah, fun. Well, they, they, they got, uh, there's a guy out there uh, out of, that, out of uh, uh, California, uh, Billy Blade, runs a show. Yeah, I know Billy Blade. Vendetta Pro. Yep. And he, he runs two big, they're all free shows, you know, but... These are about like five hour shows. Yep. On the Sunday and Monday. And uh, uh, you're going to have a lot of fun just at those shows. But there's so many things to do. And you got one of the. the they've had some really good president guys like uh, Ben Bastine and uh, Bockwinkle ran it. But the guy who's doing just a phenomenal job out there is Brian Blair, the killer B himself. When you get out there, you'll be able to hang out with him, and you know. And again, he's. But, but I I hate to not go there, but I I can't give up this opportunity. I got a deal today to spend about a week and a half in Iceland, and unfortunately, won't be a cauliflower this year. Another place that I'm definitely going to is the uh, Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame, and. Uh, it's a little west of Dallas, Texas, called uh, Wichita Falls. And it's uh, something like the College Fire Alley Club, a little bit smaller. But they're going to be honoring uh, Jake Roberts there this year, and uh, Bushwhackers, and Magnum TA, and uh, Backside Jim Duggan is coming. Uh, killer Tim Brooks will be getting honored. So I had the chance to induct Owen into that Hall of Fame last year. So, uh, that's another great event. And there's another one, actually a little closer to you in the summer, the uh, Dan Gable Museum in Waterloo, Iowa. It's a really good one, too. So any of the fans listening, if you get a chance to go to any of these events, go to them. It's, uh, and the cool thing about it, they're so... It's not like going to some kind of a... Uh, how would I say it? You go there and everybody, well, they're all fans. You know, you can talk to the boys and talk to the guys. Nobody's going to come up and say, oh, here's another fan. Here's another wrestling fan. Because everybody down there's a fan, you know. And you can hang out with all the guys and good old. And I've sat down with so many guys unexpectedly met guys. I'm sitting there and the, I was, one time I was sitting at the front and I started talking to this guy. I said, I, I know that guy, but. I know him. He had shades on and a hat on. Here I spent about an hour talking to this guy, Sir Oliver Humperdinck, great manager from the past. You know, so you never know who you're going to be. All right. Be talking to. But but I hope you have a really good time and send my best to Sean and uh, and Cody Hawk and uh, Les and any of those guys like Brian Junior. If you see him down there. And, I definitely will. I'll, I'll, I'll get. I'll, I'll do my best. To, if, who are some of the guys you you've had on? You said you've had quite a few guests. Yeah, um, I've had um, I've had uh, Ken Shamrock on. I've had Dan Severin on. Um, I had Brian. Yeah, Bla- yeah, yeah we've got. He's been on our show a few yeah. times. Um, I, I I've had <laughs> Brian. I have Brian Blair on. Um, yeah. I've. Um, I've had I've had so many um, old school wrestlers on. I've had a lot of guys from Ring of Honor, like Flip Gordon, um, and um, just there. I'm like you. I've interviewed so many <laughs> wrestlers too, like Hillbilly Jim. I've had Coco Beware on. Coco was fun. That guy had a um, a lot of great stories um, as well. Yeah. I've I've had a lot. I can't I, I I can't name them all, but I've had a lot of them. <laughs> we first time that guy's on. We said, I hope this guy doesn't want to talk any longer. The worst guest I ever had, but you can't say that to him. No, you can't. And if it's horrible, <laughs> we've had guys that say, 
Yeah, I've had some guests on that I didn't feel chemistry with, and every time I answer a question, they didn't know how to answer it, and yeah. it, it's just all. Cr- yeah, I feel you. I've been there, done that too. <laughs> I've had some interesting we, ones. We, a few years ago, we had uh, actually we had this. Uh, 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 we had uh, 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 man uh, Anderson. You know, I'm kind of like, uh, he was, uh, anyway, we had this guy on and he, uh, came on the show and talking away and everything was F this, F that, F this, F that. See, F I don't that. like that. If someone, if someone's doing I that. Believe, I gotta edit all that out, you know. Yeah, someone that does that, I hate doing that editing as well. So much. I, I don't know if, my, if it's my phone or your. I don't know if you're breaking up, but I. Yeah, my phone. My phone. If you, I, I, to the people who are listening right now, I apologize if you're hearing this beeping noise. My phone is getting. Yeah, my phone's know, getting. I, can you hear me? Okay, it's my. my yeah, um, yeah, um, I, um, yeah, um, I can hear you real well. I hope you hear me well. And that beeping noise you're hearing, that's my phone dying. And I apologize for everybody for listening to this to hear the uh, noise of my battery and my phone dying. So it's getting ready to die right hey, now. Listen, Robin, uh, pleasure being on WrestleCast. WrestlePopCast, uh, yeah. We'll have to come on again. Now, now that I got my, my it's all kind of clear, like, now I'm able to kind of talk a little bit better. I don't know what it, yeah, um, I, I'll definitely call. I'll definitely I call. Been a guest on. I, I always do the hosting. I don't. Yeah, I'll definitely call you. On. This is the first time I've ever actually been on a podcast. Yeah. So maybe you can do it again. I'll definitely, yeah, I'll definitely call you back on my uh, personal line because it's beeping. My phone's getting ready to die, so I'll give you a call on my other phone. I think I barely hear you now. I, I must be breaking up. Listen, would you send me the send me the link and uh, yeah, and uh, send me a message. Or I'll hook you up with Bruce. Okay, give him a call sometime. Like I said, thank you so much, Bob. Okay. All right. Thank you for listening to Russell Popcast. And like I said, I apologize for the beeping noise on this good interview of Bob Johnson. It's beeping because my phone battery is dying. And, you know, and like I said, I apologize for that. And you can listen to Wrestle Popcast on Spreaker, um, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, CastBox. You can follow me at, you know, Wrestle Popcast on Twitter, Wrestle Popcast on Facebook. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, Wrestle Popcast. And like I said, I apologize for the beeping of my phone getting ready to die during the last part of my interview with Bob Johnson. My phone probably died, but I like to apologize, and I hope you guys enjoyed the show.